Scenes from Burba Lake from a couple of years ago. This year's Youth Fishing Rodeo is on October 9th. We'll have all the prize winners and hopefully more shots like this one on our next show. Hello and welcome to Mead Week. I'm Brian Spant. On this edition, October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and the U.S. Army Field Band is working on a TV special. These stories and more, but first at this week's Installation Town Hall, Fort Meade Garrison Commander Colonel Chris Nyland talked about the recent mandate requiring COVID vaccinations for federal civilian employees. He then handed it over to Colonel Tracy Michael, the Fort Meade Medic Commander, who described the timeline to meet the November 22nd deadline. So just some dates for people to uh, consider. Um, as people make decisions on vaccinations, if they're going to take the Moderna vaccine, which we're able to administer down at McGill, um, the 11th of October um, really is that is that timeline, that guideline for them to give them the 28 days that they need um, to get the, the second shot wow. and, and to be in, in compliance with the guidance. So um, want to make sure that folks understand that. Of course, that's next week. So if Moderna is the vaccination of choice, um, then the 11th of October really is that is uh, is that window uh, to get them, um, you know, fully vaccinated. If they're going to uh, receive the Pfizer, it's the week following. It's the 18th of October. There's much more on this issue. You can watch the town hall in its entirety on our Facebook page. Just click on videos. Elsewhere, obtaining child care can be a difficult proposition on post and off. You may be on a waiting list right now. We spoke with the Director of Child and Youth Services, Francisco Jamison, about the waiting list and its challenges. But it's a, it's a hard sell everywhere. Um, it's, very, it's very tight. Um, it's kind of similar to the challenges we're all having with bus drivers right now. We have the same problems the school system has with bus drivers and transportation. We have the same challenges here. Uh, similarly, uh, infant care, off post, on post, very difficult. As the children get older, it gets to be a little easier with the wait list, but everyone's pretty tight and because everyone's dealing with COVID restrictions right. and, and, uh, and, and, and hiring challenges. You know, that's the other piece to the uh, wait list is, is just staffing. You know? So I always tell people if, if they have friends and family members, we'd love to have them apply to be a child and youth program assistant. If you are on a wait list, I tell you to please be patient. We'll continue to work with you and work, and work with the community. Uh, but it's, it's very complicated, it's very convoluted at times, um, but we're here to work with you. So as long as you uh, get on those wait lists very early, you know, as I, I tell people all the time, if you're an infant, you know, you're having a, a baby soon, you need to get on the wait list before the baby's born. You can't wait for the baby to be born and then get on the wait list. You have to get on as soon as you know you're expecting. We'll have a much more in-depth conversation with Director Jamison on this issue on an upcoming episode of our podcast, Fort Meade Declassified. Meanwhile, the United States Army Field Band is working with a veteran-owned production company, We Are the Mighty, in producing a half-hour special to be aired right after the Army-Navy game on December 14th. Portions of the program are devoted to highlighting the achievements of women in the military. And, uh, we're filming a breadth of soldiers across the Army in different jobs. We have a female Black Hawk pilot. We have um, a f females wanting to highlight not just how they're service members, but how they balance family and what we're doing today, breaking ground, first female Rangers, and, and highlighting the achievements of women in our military. One of the soldiers featured on the show is Staff Sergeant Tierra Jenkins from the 2nd Military Working Dog Detachment at Fort Meade. Stay tuned on our social media platforms for more information on the upcoming TV special. Meanwhile, October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month and the Family Advocacy Program at Army Community Service has a full lineup of events scheduled for the month. You can express your support by wearing purple every Friday of the month. There are information tables set up at ACS, Family Advocacy, The Exchange, and Kimbrough throughout the month. The Exchange and Gaffney Fitness Center have put up a silent witness display and the popular Five Love Languages seminar is coming up on October 28th. For more information on any of these events, contact Family Advocacy at 301-677-4118. The Religious Services Office is hosting the 27th Annual Hallelujah Festival. It's a drive through event this year at the Oregon Hills Chapel Center parking lot, Friday, October 29th from 4 to 6 p.m. You can drive up and receive prizes, candy, and raffle tickets. Raffle winners will be announced on November 1st. And finally this week, a reminder from MWR, Club Meet is hosting a comedy night Saturday, October 23rd. Enjoy stand-up comedy from four outstanding comedians and a buffet. Doors open at 6, the show starts at 8. You must be 18 or older to attend. Contact Club Mead for more information at 301-677-6969. And that's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Mead Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Mead Week.